there goes the profits. There it is. Temperature of your beer, you ready? 65 degrees. 65? That's like summertime in San Francisco. What's up guys, it's your boy Alan again, back with another video. And today, we're gonna watch another episode of Bar Rescue. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, let's go check this out. So guys, here we are, we're on South Street, downtown Philadelphia. Look at that sign, guys, rickety split. What is that? That awning makes it look like a grocery store. John, where does it say anything about a bar or cocktails or anything like that? It doesn't. It's almost like the bar is an afterthought. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't even look like a bar. Like I said, it looks like a grocery store. Literally, it's on a corner, so it's like a corner store. It does say lounge, but not only is the font small, but it's also hard to read. There should be giant signs that says bar, cocktail. So when someone looks at it, they immediately know that it's a bar. Simulate capture. Guys, look at this. This is a two-story operation. The second floor almost has to be more important than the first floor to pull you up there. That is two stories? That upstairs doesn't even look like a bar. It looks like living spaces. When you have a bar that's upstairs, it gives a nice view of the city. You should be advertising that you have a bar upstairs. I don't know where the, where the cooks went. There's Tom. He's our owner. Tom has owned the bar for about 11 years. He's a Philip. He's owned this bar for 11 years? So if anything, the problems have to be pretty recent if he's owned this bar this long. <laughs> That's Coco. She's one of your bartenders, Phil. There's Sam, another bartender. Sam is called the queen of selfies. I'm so pretty. Really? Social media has its place in advertising a bar, but if it's your personal account, you shouldn't be distracted by it during work. Hi, how are you? That's Allie. She's another one of your bartenders. How many bartenders are working in this place right now? There's nobody here. Do they really need this many bartenders right now? Frank and Dorothy enter Lickety Split, a 3,000 square foot two-story space with one bar upstairs and a second bar and display kitchen downstairs. So this is a pretty interesting um, design. It looks like the main bar is upstairs and there's a bar downstairs. This is a little confusing because when people walk in, they're just going to see that bar and they're going to think that that's the main bar and they might not even go upstairs. But uh, yeah, let's see how this plays out if it's even an issue here. Hi, this is John Taffer. How are you? Okay. Well, do you want to come out and sit with me in the car and we can talk? I'll be right out. Okay, bye-bye. <sighs> the owner's already starting to drink. Is this really happening? And how much longer do you think you can keep it open? Three more months. He's drinking constantly, stressed out with money. I oh, mean, wow. I have a baby on the way. I want him to be around for his first <sighs> Wow, so he's stressed out, but he's also drinking, which is, you know, <laughs> it's not going to make things better. It's only going to make things worse. And then she's pregnant, so she's on her way out. That means they could be losing an employee at any minute. And this place is only three months left. Holy crap, there's like a lot going on right now. So that's Frank, that's Dorothy, a tourist. And we wanted to see what kind of quality and what kind of experience they have. Pink vagina. Is that a joke? Nope. Are you serious? What's it with these people naming their drinks with these vulgar names? These guys, they think it's cool or it's funny, but it's like, how old are you? You want a bar that attracts female clientele because that's where the money is. You bring more girls, guys are naturally going to show up. You have names like that, it's going to scare a lot of female clientele away. This is Sarah's thing. That was my dad's sure. idea. Does he think that's... Whenever you design a bar, you want a female's perspective. The fact that the own daughter saying that that's the bad idea, like, like, what is this guy thinking? I'll go with the pink vagina. Right. Let me give that one All a right. shot. All right, and what is this monster one? Oh, the blue baby monster. monster. <sighs> really? This whole menu is just vulgar names. Is that really going to attract, like, this is going to scare female clientele away. What is he thinking? We're going to order some food, too, I think. All right. I'll take a cheesesteak. I'm just going to do some cheese pizza. All right. Maybe my selfie game will help me get a boyfriend. She's doing this in front of customers? Why is she taking so many selfies? It's the same background. This is clearly distracting her at work. Light, she's ready. Oh, oh. oh my god. Holy crap, that's huge. 
You have a slice of pizza served on two plates? Why are they serving such big portions? Especially when the customer's not even expecting it. Who <laughs> said it's the best pizza on South Street? My dad. Is that the best pizza on South Street? No. So he just put that sign up there. Ugh, why post a sign that says best pizza? Like what makes this because it's big? It's all about quality, not quantity. And it's so greasy that paper just absorb all that grease. It's allegedly the best pizza on South right. Street. It doesn't smell right, like something's got an off smell. Really no, good no, pizza no. usually has nice air pockets and bubbles in it. How do you eat that? It can't even hold its own structure. Even when they broke it into smaller pieces, it's still very floppy. This is like dense and flat looking, like it's got a funky taste to it. Not too appetizing. Do you eat the pizza a lot? Do you like it? You don't? Oh my god, how are you going to put a sign that says best pizza in town when your own employees don't even like it? We can conclude this is not the best pizza on South Street. What do you think? I don't know, it just doesn't taste fresh. There's a lot of grease everywhere. Like a ground mystery meat. This feels greasy and nasty. Yeah. Oh my god, can't she like get off her phone? And she's putting her hand in her mouth. This is health violation and it's in front of the customers. Like she has no shame. We're done with all this food. I think I'm gonna go next door to gyms. So he has gyms, Philly cheesesteaks across the street. One of the most famous and best cheesesteak operations. Oh my God. You have literal competition right across the street and you're serving that? This is Philadelphia. Like, how can you screw up the cheesesteak? It's inexcusable. If you don't make good Philly cheesesteak, why even have it when the customers can just go across the street and get a much more superior one? If you are cheap, remember, please, remember. please, please stay home and drink. Yo, just from the outside perspective, it doesn't really make you feel comfortable. Can I get a beer? Man, that beer's pouring a little foamy over there, huh? It's too warm. <sighs> Come on, like, not only is it important to keep the uh, beer cold because it should be cold but look at how much you're wasting with the foam that means you're getting less money out of each keg you check out the scene maybe upstairs will be a little bit better they went upstairs now hi how you doing hi, good how man how are you good how are you you guys got some more freaky name drinks up here Dude, he's still drinking while greeting the customers that is not a good look he doesn't even look like a owner or a manager he just looks like another customer this guy can drink some beer <laughs> he's grabbing for another one right there. Responsibility starts behind the bar. When so he's he's going behind the bar and grabbing the beer himself. Customer's perspective, it just looks like some random person just went behind the bar and grabbed the beer. And look at all this random stuff in the fridge. Is this like personal fridge? When you're this drunk, you cannot run a business. Do you know why Mickey was mad at Minnie? She was goofy. How's that funny? That's not, there's no punchline. Is it like a sexual thing? Like you all of a sudden you can start having an orgasm or Oh my God, he's hitting on the female guests. So not only do you have this vulgar menu that is going to scare away the female clientele, now he's drunkenly approaching his own customers. When Tom gets drunk, his mouth gets going, right? Mm -hmm. yep. He starts speaking vulgar, starts offending women. You told me you were a virgin last time I asked you. What? He's talking about alleys. What is he doing? He's already losing money. Why do you want to scare away your own customers? Yeah, we can look the other way. Maybe he doesn't know how to name cocktails. But you were an undercover cop. How are you this socially uncalibrated right now? Can you imagine being an undercover cop and having no control of what comes out of your mouth? I'm surprised this guy hasn't been shot yet. Embarrassing her. Oh my god, you are such white trash. Yeah, he called her. He just said that to his own bartender. <sighs> Somebody has to send him home. This is, he's only had two beers and he's already this drunk. Was he drinking before he showed up to work? Can somebody change the IPA? Crazy oh, girl, the oh, one tooth yeah. comes in, goes with Can somebody change the IPA, like ASAP? Tom is too much enjoying himself, so why they asked to change a keg, but he's already wasted. Like, you need to change a keg so he can make money. Does he not care about making money? He's drinking his own product and scaring away the customers. You make complaints about the head, say you never got complained about head before. Coco's a good girl. We love Coco. There goes a beer. You know you're dead. <sighs> he can't even hold on to his beer. That's how drunk he is right now. How is he this drunk? Off of two or three beers. 
Dad, how drunk is he right now? He's pretty drunk. George, I need a mop beer. He dropped the beer. Of course we're not You're gonna blame the customer? They saw you. What are you doing? Then you're making your bartenders clean up your mess that you just made. I'm surprised none of these bartenders have left yet. We got an owner who's so drunk he can't talk. I'm gonna go to work, okay? I trust you. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. I drink a lot of beer. I drink every single day, sometimes. He's telling this to a customer. I mean, at least he's drinking water. Oh. John Taffer. I'm Gaylord. How are you, sir? Your daughter called me and says to me, you're pretty much face drunk here every day. Who gives a You're a drunk home. Really? Oh, my God. How's he... Why does he even show up if he's just going to get this wasted every day? It's not helping the customers. It's not helping the bartenders. It's not helping him make money. It's only making him lose money. And he had a sign earlier that said that, oh, if you don't tip, then just stay home. I was like, well, you're probably not tipping your bartenders for drinking your own beer. So why don't you just stay home and drink? Why do you insult the people that work for you? I don't realize it all the time. I really don't. Coco, how often does he insult you? Just about every shift. Allie, what is... How are they putting up with this? I mean, not only are they insulting him, but there's, he's scaring away the customers, so they can't make their tips. This is obvious why this place is failing. I mean, the people here don't even like to work here. They don't like the food. They're getting insulted, degraded. Like, this is demoralizing. I want the three of you to sit at the bar, and I want you to talk to him like he talks to you. I am a blue veiny monster and a blackout. <laughs> is he making it right? Not really. Dump it out. Make it again. You're a bartender. You don't even know what the you're doing, do you? Jeez, he doesn't even know what's going on. Like, is he gonna even remember any of this? It's sad. Dude, they're crying over this. Like, they feel bad for him, too. Yeah, this is like one of the most saddest things I've seen. Maybe they're still here because they care about him. I mean, that's the only thing I could think of. What happens when he gets drunk in here? He makes a fool out of himself sometimes. You gotta change. You gotta be here for baby Dominic. I will. I promise. I promise. Is he still drunk? He's wearing the same thing as he wore last night. Habits like this are not the quickest to change. I think I've had a drink every day for 25 years. Why do you think he drinks? To cope with the stress. I try to... 25 years. He's on the bar 11 years. So... He... He was drinking even when he was an undercover cop. So this is like a long-term thing. It's not recent. There goes the profits. There it is. Temperature of your beer, you ready? 65 degrees. 65? That's like summertime in San Francisco. It's not even close to being refrigerated. At that temperature, the beer is most likely going bad. When we cross 39, 40 degrees, your chance to make money on beer is over. Down here is one set of problems. Upstairs is a whole other set of problems. I can only imagine how warm the beer is going to be upstairs because the lines are going to be longer and if they're not insulated on the downstairs bar, they're definitely not going to be insulated when they have to travel a longer distance. And they remember bad tippers. Bad tippers can look forward to bad service. If you are cheap, please stay home and drink. Is this funny? It's supposed to be. Is this a That's not funny. It sounds like a threat. Like, what's this sense of humor? I'm just, like, confused. That's inside a refrigerator that's not up to temp. What is that? Oh, what are we got chicken? Why does it look like that? Why is it not covered? It's not covered. It's absolutely disgusting. How old is this? Oh, uh, a couple, couple days ago. That's raw chicken. That should not even be on. Raw chicken that's not dated, not covered. Oh my God. How did they get away with a health inspection here? On a middle Smell shot. it. It's no good. Smell it's it. Yeah. It's no good. Bull <sighs> this is like common stuff. Even as a bartender, we have to get certified for, you know, food handling. How did they hire these guys and not get them trained properly? Everything in this box gets thrown away. Everything. I mean, look at all this dough. This is your money. Look at this. It's all dried out. Is nothing covered? Why do they run it like this? Do they even know how to cook at home? So where is the rest of the dough? I'm walking down the basement. Show us. 
Look at this! Oh my god! Why the... Nothing's covered and they're not even stacked properly! Why is this so messy? Like, oh, this is disgusting. You have different parts of the pan touching each other in the basement walk-in. How are they operating like this? This is disgusting! I'm gonna throw up. That is upside down. It's touching. Oh my god, why is it upside down? This is insane. Like, they're serving this to customers? We did our stir and now we want to do a proper shake technique. When you shake, you want to make sure that the glass is behind you. Just in case this comes loose, you don't want it falling off in front of your guests, okay? So what you want to do is kind of... It is also acceptable to shake uh, sideways, so matching uh, parallel to the bar, as long as a smaller tumbler isn't facing the guests. Really good, I feel energetic. If we work together, guess what? It will happen, and we will work as a team. So why don't you do some type of work? <sighs> really? You're still doing the selfie thing? You should be thinking about the stress test right now. What would you like, sir? Hmm? You got it. Please don't grab your coops by the bowl. When glassware has a stem, there's a reason for that, and it's because you don't want to warm the drink up by touching the bowl. So always grab by the stem. Are they opened? They just opened the doors and they're still setting up the upstairs bar. Door in for you. Thank you. Oh my god. So there's nobody here. Yeah, why is the upstairs bar empty? See, this is why I was like, this is very confusing design. When people come in, the first thing they're gonna see is the downstairs bar. There's nothing advertising that there's an upstairs bar, which is much bigger and can hold more people. You got any food orders for me for the run? Let me know. I'll run them downstairs. I have one right here. What is it? Pizza pie, half pepperoni. I need a slice. There's no POS system? They, how are the bartenders supposed to communicate to the kitchen if they have to handwrite the tickets? Like, especially when it gets busy like this and the kitchen is downstairs. This is insane that they've been doing this for 11 years. This is for upstairs, one cheese pie, and I need a slice for upstairs, okay? So, Tom, what are we doing? You have to go up, see if they have any tickets? Yes. But they're what? too busy, I have to. So they're running up and down? Right, right, right. All night long. I mean, that's a good workout, but it's not a way to run a freaking bar with food. This is insane that nobody just never came up that you have to go up and down the stairs just ring in a slice of pizza. Sam, her anxiety is increasing by the moment. I'm going home. Here you go. You're going home? Yeah, I'm leaving. I'm done. What do you mean you're gone? I'm oh my god. You're just gonna walk out of shift because you're overwhelmed. Like, think about it. This is what you want. You want it to be busy so you can make money. There's only three cocktails. Way smaller than that giant board that they had earlier with the offensive names for cocktails. I mean, you have one built drink, one shaken, and one stirred. And this is a stress test. You should understand that it's going to be busy. Pizza dying in the window. Who's running the food? The owner's running the food? Like, like if he wasn't here, then the bartenders are so busy, then they have to like ditch the bar to pick up the pizza, and then they have to find the customer who ordered it. Like, there is no system here. I need a beer. Then. <sighs> are you kidding me? John just said, don't drink anything or he'll leave. Agua. We have any agua? I need water. Did he not get the beer because John was there? Or did he really like change his mind and knew what the right thing to do was? And of course, our signature item. And we have our baked Philly cheesesteak. Upstairs, we did them a little smaller, but down here, and we gave the customer substance. The downstairs science. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, you know, because running food up and down the stairs like that, you know, is a bit of a workout. And if you want the upstairs bar to be busy, so smaller bites on the uh, upstairs would make more sense because um, you wouldn't need to find a lot of space to put it. And downstairs, you have more sitting areas. The downstairs bars, which is going to be the secondary bar, 
it's probably going to be targeting people who um, are there primarily for the food. So you're going to have more space for larger dishes. This is going to have a whole new name. This is going to have a whole new name. There's going to be one brand downstairs that sends the message we're a bar with great pizza. And there's going to be a very different message on the top floor. Yeah, I've seen uh, bars do this very well. Uh, these hybrid style bars. Yeah, I'm for it. Like I've seen bars where they try to do upstairs and downstairs the same and it doesn't work out. One bar usually gets busy and the other bar, you know, doesn't get as much love. But having two different bars, you can attract two different types of crowds, which means that you basically own two different bars because they have two different identities. And it also gives you more um, diversity on the type of guests that you attract. So you guys ready to see your bar? Yes. Ready. All right. In the oh, oh my, my God. God. Awesome. Yeah. Now you can definitely tell that this is a two-story bar. Yeah, earlier the upstairs floor wasn't even well lit. Now it's lit, so you can see that there's something going on upstairs. I can't wait to see inside. It looks so good, Dad. It does, yeah. That's awesome. Why is the pizza called alleged? Alleged the best. <laughs> That's a funny joke that's making fun of himself. But now it is. And it's a throwback to you as a police officer. So alleged bar and pizza and second state lounge. What was the second state? Dude, that's pretty cool. They actually market the pizza downstairs more too. So downstairs is more of like a pizza restaurant with a small bar. And the upstairs is the main lounge. But look at your kitchen. We have the pizza station in the corner facing out those windows. When he's tossing pies, watch wow. how people... So now it's like a partially open kitchen so people can see it. I didn't want to change the bar very much because it's really cool and historic. So we actually refinished it to age it more. We took... Wow, that's pretty cool. That, yeah, it is the old bar, so it's kind of cool that you just left it as it is and just touched everything up. Upstairs, our historic motif is killing it. Look at the second floor, it's packed. And that's what'll double Tom's revenues. And, and see, now you can actually see how busy it is from down on the street level. Earlier, it was almost like they were hiding the fact there was a bar up there. Hey, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check out these other videos as well. And please leave on the comment section on what videos I should react to next. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.